KSJE is supported by the Farmington Civic Center, bringing a full slate of entertainment to Farmington and San Juan County. Billy Bob Thornton and the Boxmasters, Sunday, May 1st at 7.30 p.m. The Farmington Civic Center, 200 West Arrington in downtown Farmington. Find out more online at fmtn.org slash shows or 505-599-1148. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, a community-owned and operated hospital, here for you when you need us. From emergency care to routine checkups and screenings, caregivers are here and ready to provide the safe, high-quality care you need close to home. Online at SanJuanRegional.com with the latest health information and resources to help you live life better here. Thirteen minutes past eight o'clock. It is Thursday morning, the 21st day of April, 2022. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin, and thank you for tuning in to KSJE 90.9 FM over the air, of course, here in San Juan County. Everywhere else on planet Earth can tune in at KSJE.com, of course, and we welcome our viewers because this is a community-supported visual radio station. So welcome to our viewers who are watching the program this morning on the KSJE Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and our Twitter account. We're glad that you were with us this morning, everybody, because coming up in the next few moments, an update from San Juan County. We've got lots going on in the county. This is a special month for counties all across New Mexico. We'll talk a little bit about that and much, much more. That begins in the next few moments right here on KSJE. Later on this hour, we'll get an update on the construction of the LDS Temple in Farmington. The groundbreaking for that is planned for next week. We'll give you some details about that coming up this morning, 845 on KSJE. Next hour, Mick Hess is going to take us roving with the arts, and this morning Mick is playing selections from the Ural Philharmonic Orchestra. You'll hear that today after the news at 906 on KSJE. We also remind you to connect with us on our Instagram page in addition to Facebook and YouTube and Twitter. And if you're a podcast person, you can subscribe for free to KSJE Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, so you can check them out on places like iTunes and Spotify and iHeartRadio, Pandora and Google Podcasts, and much, much more. Take us with you. Maybe discover a program you may have missed from KSJE on our podcast offerings. Weather forecast, it's a sunny morning here in Farmington. It's 50 degrees outside our studios at San Juan College. We are expecting a breezy and sunny day today with a high near 80 degrees this afternoon. Clear tonight with a low of 51, but then those winds will pick up tomorrow and cooler weather comes in. The high 68 on Friday, 37 with maybe a chance of showers Friday night. On Saturday, sunshine again with a high of 57 degrees, 61 in sunshine on Sunday, back up to 69 on Monday, and look at that, low to mid-80s for the rest of next week. Well, let me introduce my guests who are here with me this morning, again from San Juan County. County Manager Mike Stark is here. Mr. Stark, good morning. Good to have you back. Good morning, Scott. Always good to be here. Thank you for coming in. Great to see you. you also, Nick Burrell is here. Nick, good morning to you. Great good to morning, see you Scott. as well. You too. Thank you for being here. Public Works Director from San Juan County, and Armand Ariano is here as well, the new Solid Waste Director for the San Juan County Good uh, Government. Good morning to you. Welcome, everyone. So great to have you all here to talk a bit about things that are going on in the county. Mike Stark, we'll, talk, we'll start with you. And so um, this is an important month, as I mentioned, right? There, counties are being honored uh, throughout the state, aren't they? It is. The National Association of Counties um, for a number of years now has declared April a National County Government Month. And so our county commission followed suit and uh, adopting a, a resolution in support of that and, and actually had uh, the chair of our commission uh, with a nice op-ed in the Daily Times this morning talking about how uh, counties are here to serve our communities. and Right. A nice reminder, I think, for all of us of just what the county government provides for the residents. Pretty, pretty all-encompassing uh, set of services and, you know, we remind folks of that and it couldn't be more fitting that we're talking about all things public works today because right. of the, the enormous responsibility they have uh, relative to maintaining our, our road infrastructure and solid waste and vector control uh, programs and so yeah it's nice to be here to to celebrate the unsung heroes here, here in our uh, in our community that work each and every day on behalf of the citizens to 
right. to take care of their infrastructure. Very much so. And some of these things that I know we're going to be talking about are, are kind of those behind the scenes types of things that maybe we wouldn't always recognize. And so I think it's just important to remember the folks that are working kind of behind the scenes to you keep bet. things um, clear and working and shiny and all in good repair and all those things, right? So Absolutely. You know, it, it's amazing when you think about the scope of the services. There's 740 um, road miles that the San Juan County Public Works Department is responsible for and maintains and 19 bridges. Um, we have 12 transfer stations. So a lot of things that we do and, and uh, folks sometimes I think take those services for granted. Um, but sure. It's good to remind everybody of what we do and how we do it and and how we, we pay for some of those services that they depend on each and every day. Right, very true. Well, and I know when those things aren't available, you hear about it. We do. And we hear we, about we it. We do. I mean, when and when we have problems like, hey, with roads, well, um, sure. we definitely hear about it. Right, <laughs> or have to change some hours somewhere at a transfer Correct. station or whatever. I think folks are like, hey, you know, I, I rely on that, and, and they don't maybe realize that that is a county service, and it costs something to have someone there at those hours to accept those loads and whatever yep. the case may be and, and all bet. the things that you know how it all how it all goes together and there are absolutely. costs involved so absolutely so, great to have you all here um, Nick Varela let's talk a little bit about some of those roads in in San Juan County and what that what that means for uh, for you and and how things are going I know as Mr. Stark mentioned a lot of bridges and those are always needing maintenance and things along that line but uh, what's what's the latest so yeah Mike had mentioned you know behind the scenes stuff um, Probably something that's very much in the scenes is uh, the, the bridge on um, County Road 5500 in Lee Acres that crosses the San Juan River. Um, after 11 months of construction um, and, and three years of prior significant load restriction and um, one lane operations, uh, we'll be opening that bridge to the public in about two weeks. Um, hey. So the project is Kay. substantially complete and uh, we'll be uh, accepting it from the contractor around the first week of May. Um, I'm sure Mike will have our commission out there to, to cut a ribbon. And uh, You have to. You have to. That's a de that's just a definite. You have to have a ribbon cutting, it's right? either cut a ribbon or have a vehicle drive through the ribbon. So there, you know, well, that's th going to be... There you go. Yeah, we're still okay. planning that. Okay. All right. So stay tuned. I got it. Okay. <laughs> but I, I know a lot of folks in that, in that neighborhood have been really watching that project, and it, it's taken a, a, a while. Um, to get where we are today, and so I know that's going to be exciting for uh, news for a lot of folks to know that that bridge will be reopening soon. Sure. No, there's, a, I think, a reason people use building bridges as an analogy because it's no small feat. Um, you know, this was a, a five-year project, and I think we actually hit our targets, um, you know, along the way. It's just how long it takes. Right. Right. Very good. Well, congratulations on, on that completion of that project. I guess the next question would be, what's next? Is there another bridge on the horizon that uh, you're looking at that maybe needs some attention? Um, sure. I mean, there, there's always maintenance, uh, maintenance projects going on. Uh, nothing is certainly as high profile as the bridge on 5500. You know, summertime is typically the time where we do our, our resurfacing maintenance uh, of our asphalt roads. Um, we have roughly of our 740 miles, Mike mentioned, Roughly 250 of those are, are paved roads. Um, asphalt roads generally have a lifespan of seven to 10 years. So we try to keep, uh, you know, avoiding deferred maintenance and we have our roads on a seven to 10 year resurfacing schedule. Um, so this summer, the, the big project is on road 6100, which is south of US 64 between Farmington and, um, and Kirtland and even beyond Kirtland toward, toward Fruitland. Right, pretty um, heavily traveled county road isn't it it is um that used to be the the state highway at one point in time uh, before us 64 was built in its current location so we have a, a actually a full depth asphalt milling and asphalt resurfacing project there that starts may the 9th um so the milling effort will be about a week we'll probably be working on the road for about a month after that um dealing with trouble spots and then we'll put a, a fresh coat of or three inches of asphalt on top um Every year we do chip seal projects. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we try to do about 20 miles annually. This year it's it's somewhat less than that. One, because of that project on 6100. And we're also taking the opportunity to address uh, county-owned parking lots. Um, that's also you know public infrastructure that, that we're responsible for maintaining in public works. Um, so we have a very broad crack seal program in county parking lots this year. I want to say the number is something like 45 parking lots ranging from the the very vast parking lot at McGee Park um, to smaller parking lots at, at fire stations. 
that are all in need of some maintenance. Uh, so we'll be doing that. Um, one road that, that is fairly visible is Road 390, which is the extension of uh, Wildflower Parkway heading out of Farmington toward Road 350 on Crouch Mesa. Uh, we will be doing a chip seal there. Um, so folks will see crews and signs and be, Got asked, it. be asked to observe them. But oh, right. chip seal projects are quick. We're in and out. Typically uh, for a road like 390, which I think is about three miles, it's a two-day job. So it, right. it won't be a major inconvenience. And that is part of what helps to, I guess, lengthen the lifespan of these asphalt roads and things like that, being able to do these chip seals from time to time in, in some trouble spots maybe as wear and tear gets to them, and so you don't have to redo the whole thing? It is. So typically when we or when we chip seal, we'll first do a, a crack seal. Um, you know, addressing the cracks, we'll fill those with a, um, an asphalt or a rubberized crack seal product. And then we'll put a, a chip seal on top, which is a, a layer of heavy oil, followed by... Um, half inch minus uh, rock chips uh, or it's typically called an open graded friction course if you're you're an engineer um, but yeah it's again as as asphalt ages the asphalt component bakes off as you know if you were to have an oil stain in your driveway after a number of years that that stain would disappear that's just basically uv degradation of the oil um, same thing happens to asphalt so when we add that fresh oil it you know penetrates back into the existing asphalt and we we put a fresh coat on top so, gotcha. Like you said, that's life to the road. Right, right. Very good. My guest this morning from San Juan County, we were talking about public works and some of the projects that the county is doing. Um, this was this came up yesterday, Mike Stark, when I had Mayor Farmington on the program, mm -hmm. and that was the long-awaited um, Pinion Hills extension project across the Animas River and up onto Crouch Mesa, which, of course, is county um area county land and so the county is a big partner in that project as well i'm not sure if you can speak about that oh, this morning but i know absolutely. it's been long awaited yeah happy to for speak about it a decade or more i think to have this this bridge built across the animus river and kind of connect up with um the roads on top of crouch mesa and then come back down near andrea drive to link up with highway 64 is that kind of what we're talking about uh, well, it actually would connect to, to County Road 390 and Thank then you. over to, right. to 350, and then yeah, a little jog to get there. But right, but that's but an exciting um, a, move forward, right? With this expensive project. Exciting project. Um, you, you mentioned 10 years. It's actually I think been closer to 20 years. Okay. Well, time county, flies when you're having fun well, waiting that, on federal dollars, right? Uh, well, or just waiting on any dollars, <laughs> <laughs> federal, okay. state, or state, yes, local. Um, but it's been on the radar for some time, and we've you know worked collectively to try to. To find a, a funding mechanism for that project, we tried unsuccessfully, um, collectively working on some federal grant applications. I believe four or five. Nick, I did three. Three, I yeah. So I think okay. five total, as I recall, through right. time, and and uh, we just never ranked high enough um, with those programs to to receive funding. Competing I, nationally for those dollars, right? Yes, and and you have to really show, you know, the one of the biggest factors you have to overcome is. The number of direct beneficiaries of the project and you know being a fairly more rural area relative to some of the metro areas you're competing against it just never we would never uh, match up well so um, kudos to the state of new mexico uh, and unfortunately outgoing cabinet secretary uh, michael sandoval who who really helped to spearhead this along with our state legislators who are working behind the scenes to secure some dollars for this project it couldn't have been done with without these folks um, you know, helping to, to put a good word in and uh, as dollars were available at the state level. And so they've agreed, the state of New Mexico, to fully fund um, this project all the way through construction, re regardless of any inflation that's seen between now and then. And, wow. And we would, would think that they'll probably, we can anticipate some of that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big project. It's a regional transportation project that will benefit a lot of folks. Um, Crouch Mesa is one of the the, the faster growing areas in the county, um, right. even though we you know, saw a population decline from the last census, that area, um, there are quite a few residents that live up there that access um, services, you know, towards uh, the Farmington uh, kind of metro area there. So, right. yeah, it, it's critical, and uh, we're glad that that project is fully funded and on its way to, to being constructed. That is exciting, and as the mayor said, he's got it in writing. I guess there's a letter, so at least you have it in writing. Yeah, we, assurances. We, we, we have at least an email and we've already had a kickoff meeting with with dot staff okay so because this uh, is a i mean it's a lot i remember when it was 25 million now the mayor is telling me it's no, near 40 million now is that the the, the bill of this ahead, uh, nick, project oh. nick is that where we are or is <laughs> it still climbing um, 
So yeah, they're actually beyond a, a letter. There is a, actually a $40 million obligation that's working its way through the statewide transportation improvement program right now, which will actually park those funds mm -hmm. in the project. Um, it should be done in May. Uh, yeah, the current estimate um, for our phase of the project is roughly 14 million. The city of Farmington's was, I, I think, 27 million. Um, and who knows where that will be in two years from now when we actually put a shovel in the ground for the project. So. Gotcha. And that's about the timeline that we're looking at two years? That's where we're at for the county. I think the city's a little bit ahead of us, maybe 18 months was the last number I heard when we were having a, a collective meeting. But uh, gotcha. there are still some pre-construction tasks to be done. Um, but uh, at least there's, there's certainly a sizable amount of money behind the project now. Right. Well, again, that's a major, again, uh, project for the region, as you were saying, Mike Stark, and this will provide the a third river crossing between Browning Parkway and Flora Vista, basically, um, to the Crouch Mesa area. Correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, that will ultimately end up being used not just for access to Crouch Mesa, but I think I could see a, a lot of um, locals using that to access all the way to, to the Albuquerque areas being the most convenient way to cross the river and Sure. And make their way over to, to 350 and then 64. Right. And points east. Yeah. So there, there you go. Well, that's exciting. Thank you for the update, gentlemen, on, on that. And the county's part of that project. Uh, that's a, a long-awaited um, road project, as we've been talking about. So that sounds like a, a good thing for the region. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're glad we're able to, to, to finally get that done and funded. Right. Very good. And uh, let's go down to uh, Armand Ariano, the newest uh, member of the solid waste team at the county, the new manager of the solid waste department there. Armand, talk to me a little bit about what you're busy doing these days. Well, uh, just managing uh, 12 uh, collection centers throughout the county. Um, we, uh, we also do... Uh, BLM cleanups with illegal dump sites. Right. Um, we do roadside, you know, trash cleanup, and, um, and I know those kind of helps with the, uh, you know, not only just the trash issue, but I mean, you know, like with my previous, you know, position there at the county, um, like a lot of the illegal dump sites out in BLM, um, create refuge for you know for rodents and stuff like that. And, Sure, and I know those as we were talking, those transfer stations get a lot of get a lot of use. They're very convenient for folks, and that's why the, by design, right? They're right. designed to be strategically placed throughout the county, so folks don't have to come to the landfill. They can go to those transfer stations and uh, and get rid of whatever they've got, uh, you know, lying around the house that you will accept at those stations, right? Right. Um, we do um, we do accept you know household trash. Um, we don't accept any like construction or um, remodel materials. Um, we kind of were limited to how many yards per uh, per day um, at the collection centers, um, since we're only a registered collection center. Uh, right, and folks can always come to the the uh, landfill, right? And just as a reminder, that's not a county facility; it is a waste management facility. Correct. It is a it is a county facility, but we we Pardon contract me. the operations out to waste management. Got you. Yeah. Sorry, I knew there was, and as I was saying it, I'm like, that doesn't sound right coming out of my mouth. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad that you corrected me, Mike Stark. But, uh, but again, that is, uh, that is there and, uh, and available for folks who can't use the transfer stations or for whatever reason don't want to. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's a, there's a fee to utilize um, the landfill um, unless you happen to be a, a customer within the city limits of Farmington and Aztec. They do have a program. Uh, through their separate contracts with those two municipalities to allow for a, a free uh, dump um, per month. Um, right. I can't remember how many utility bills back, three or four, I believe. Um, yeah, so it, th that, sure. that is an option, um, but everybody else would have to, to, to pay a nominal fee. Um, and it's very similar to, you know, going to one of our uh, solid waste convenience stations because it really they are that's they're there for convenience right so that you don't have to drive all the way to the landfill you've got you know a, a disposal site right in your backyard that's um you know in full compliance with nmed right. regulations that's and, important and it is very important you know it used to be that um, there were a scattered number of of dump sites throughout the county that didn't meet compliance and, and that's what ultimately led to the creation of the solid waste department and um, expanding convenience stations throughout the county and sure um, to make certain that that we could do that in the you know 
proper and environmentally friendly manner. Right. Well, and I want to ask you all about kind of the illegal dumping situation out in the in the county or public lands and things along that line as we approach Earth Day here um, during the month of April. I know there are some uh, major events that are scheduled in the Glade for one that's planning to clean up and the county has an app that is now available, I know, to clean up uh, and report illegal dump sites and things like that. But it's some of those old um, dump sites, I think, that create some environmental concerns for folks after they've been out there for a while. And so, Armand, talk to me a little bit about, about the work that your folks are doing. Well, the, uh, the Cleanup San Juan app, I mean, it's a very uh, helpful tool for, for our crews so, um, to kind of pinpoint where, where the problems are. And um, if you used to look on the, on the app, I mean, people would be really surprised on how many sites there is throughout the county. Um, Probably a little disgusted too, I imagine, right? When they when they see how many come in, but but the app makes it fairly easy to report, right? Because right. it gives you the longitude and latitude and the location, so your crews can go out and really pinpoint and find the actual area instead of just saying it's that third wash past the stop sign. Right. Um, I mean, you can also take a picture of the site, um, and kind of helps helps us uh, more recognize the site that was posted on the on the app, um, and so we. Uh, so whenever we do um, get those sites, you know, marked on the map, it kind of makes us e makes it easier for us to go out and, and find them and clean them up, and you know, kind of a little more time, um, better management and time. Yeah, you can find it pretty quickly. Right is is the idea, right? And I imagine you're not surprised anymore about what things are found out in the in the desert sometimes, right? There, when people report anything from there's everything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to think about what you what your folks would find out there, but a lot of stuff, and it's unfortunate, right? Because of, we have these uh, transfer convenience stations and and the landfill, of course, and so that's the that's a responsible thing to do. But still, folks go out there and and dump illegally, which is not the good thing to do. And and of course, we're we're trying to be seen as an outdoor recreation county, and uh, and and illegal dumping really doesn't help in that that image, does it, Mike Stark? It it does not, and that's why it's a strategic initiative um, for for the county commission. Uh, make us shine. We know how important it is that, that we look good, that we're attractive to uh, outside investment into our area, the tourists wanting to come here. Um, and so the, the Clean Up San Juan app and the, and the program we have for cleanup of public lands, the, the cleanup we have for private lands for those folks that, that want to voluntarily uh, enter into that program, we can assist in that fashion. We've done over a thousand cleanups uh, to date, which is pretty significant since 2006. Uh, we recently um, worked with the Department of Transportation, NMDOT, uh, to conduct a highway cleanup. So it wasn't just NMDOT that was out there, and we appreciate their support. They had about 25 of their team members from across the state. We added 25 of ours, and over a two-day period, cleaned up the stretch of highway from on 516 between Farmington and Aztec, and then also uh, Farmington to just shy of the Bloomfield area. So, um, and it made a huge difference. Um, but unfortunately, as you mentioned uh, earlier, we, we still have a high number of litter bugs. Uh, it wasn't, but just the next day, as, as I was driving home and admiring how great of a job our, our team did at NMDOT, that I end up seeing a, a pillow that's thrashed out in the middle of the median and a couple of empty plastic containers. So it, um, I hope, you know, we try to do our best to make us shine as our initiative, but we're also, that just can't be a, a, a government-led uh, effort. It, it has to be the citizens taking hold of that and truly buying into it to keep our, our county clean. Right. Uh, for all the reasons you mentioned. Yeah, no, very true. And that app, I just have to say, you know, again, everyone has a smartphone, and it's available for the Apple iPhones and Android phones. It's it's on the App Store. It is on the Cleanup San Juan County app, yeah. and it's it's local to our county and our GPS, and all and a report to all the necessary folks who need to need notification of this when you find a site. Absolutely, and so then you can also track the progress of the cleanup relative to that site on our, as Armand was mentioning, on our dashboard at sjcounty.net. So nice. um, you actually have a way to follow up and see where we stand with that. Uh, but unfortunately, as you mentioned too. There are quite a few sites, yeah. and uh, you know, with limited resources, we, we try to do our best to, to get as many of those as we can, as quickly as we can. Right. Um, but but that's, a, that's an ongoing challenge, and, and, and we appreciate efforts of uh, the cliffhangers, this, 
this weekend. You mentioned the Glade cleanup. They, right. They do that on an annual basis um, and, and to, to help keep that recreational area uh, free of trash and debris. And, and then I know we, the local governments, uh, San Juan County, um, the, B, the BLM will, will certainly look on public lands day in September to do a, a similar effort um, to clean up lands. And then, of course, all those days in between of always right. looking for ways to keep us clean. So it is that important and something that uh, we, we want to certainly see folks, you know, take take heed of that message. And no, more importantly, it's important to, so important to us and our commission, it's one of our um, top strategic initiatives over the next five years. Got it. Well, that's an important thing, and, and good to see the support of the commission behind this these efforts, right, to uh, to clean up the county. You mentioned the private property program, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about that one um, as to kind of what that's involved. And this is, I know we've talked about it in the past, but maybe not recently, and that is if, if someone has something on their private property that they maybe are having a hard time disposing of, they can reach out to the county and maybe um, get some help with that? Sure, Scott. So uh, that program is, is run through our community development department. Um, it is, to some degree, a need-based program. Uh, so in order to, to participate, you, know, you would need to be willing to provide your financial information to the community development department just to, to prove that, indeed, there's a financial need on your part um, for, for some government assistance. Um, otherwise, there are local vendors in town that will certainly um, clean up your property for, for a, a higher fee. Um, but yeah, uh, sure. you know, every year we do budget uh, roughly $25,000 for that program. Uh, that covers largely just disposal fees at landfill. Um, the larger projects are indeed derelict mobile homes that have either been, you know, left to rot or there was a fire. Um, oftentimes it's uh, someone who might have inherited the property from a, a relative and they, they're overwhelmed by it. Um, you know, they've, they've just taken on this problem that they now need to try to fix. Um, so again, it, it runs through um, Bob Carmen and, at, and Michelle Truby Tillen at our community development department. Once they've vetted a project, uh, they'll, they'll hand it to Public Works for, for the cleanup and um, we'll put it in our queue. We'll send an excavator and a backhoe out there and, and send it to the landfill. Gotcha. And recycle what we can. Right. And you've done numerous of these types of projects, right, since this project or this program got, got off the ground. And so, I mean, it's really made a big difference, I think, for those property owners and their neighbors probably um, in, the, in the meantime. Right? It's very true. Um, yeah, oftentimes the complaint does come from a neighbor um, to code compliance, and they'll go out and investigate. But in terms of exact numbers, I, I couldn't say Mike might be able to speak a lot better than I can to the duration of the project, but I do know we, we commit about 25000 annually. And that translates to, you know, 10, 10 major cleanups in, in terms of tipping fees. Gotcha. Very good. Well, and again, I wouldn't even try to imagine where to start if I had to dispose of a mobile home or a, sure. one that had a fire or things like that. That's just a little bit beyond my comprehension. So I'm glad that there's folks available to maybe help with that, especially when it's needs-based. And I think if folks are really having a hard time to afford to do that, that there's help from the county and they can sure. reach out to you. So that's a good thing. Uh, gentlemen, we're almost out of time. So uh, Mike Stark, anything else planned for this month as we uh, celebrate our clean county? Well, I, it, yes. In fact, I want to go back to, you mentioned how, you know, we're really all supportive here regionally of, of increasing and enhancing outdoor rec opportunities. Yes, yeah, right. I certainly think it would be uh, worthy of us to speak about the, the trail projects that, that Nick and uh, led by by him and his team have have done over the past uh, gosh three four years now over 30 miles of new trail uh, out on the BLM that has been cleared and and um, improved um, across the primarily initially the the Glade Run recreation area but now we've got another grant application in with the state to look at some BLM lands west of, of Farmington um, and to improve some trails there but certainly that's been a a key initiative of the, of the county as well as uh, a boat uh, launch uh, that we received funding for through the Gold King Mine Settlement. Um, That's right. Uh, right. $160,000 uh, for a Cedar Hill um, boat launch. It would be the most northern uh, boat launch in San Juan County uh, on the Animas River and it would actually make the 10th um, boat ramp area in San Juan County. So we're, we're very excited about that. Um, always looking for ways to to enhance um, those outdoor rec opportunities here because it is, I'm glad it's become such an important part uh, of our community and, and folks really buying into the fact that that's, 
that's a talk about a strategic initiative. That's another one of ours. Yes, it's to right. Enhance and, and support that industry because it look at the, the the fruits of everyone's labor related to that. And and I know the trail improvements. We recently went to go look at those and um, uh, specifically on the Anasazi Trail. And it was gosh, middle of January, I think pretty cold out and uh, there were six vehicles in the parking lot from Durango, Colorado and they uh, stopped to, to share with us how, how much they really enjoyed the improvements and that um, they, they felt like we were really creating something special down here. Nice. Well, that's what you hope to do, right? Absolutely. So that's the idea. So that's a great confirmation of these of these efforts. And so, um, Nick, these trails are kind of in, the, as uh, Mike Stark was saying, kind of near that glade recreation area that is of course blm land that butts up to county land out in that area of uh, the county it is so there's been two distinct areas of development we've been working on one being the you know i guess what's referred to as the anasazi area which is directly across college Ave from the blm's office uh the second being uh glade run east um which we developed a new trailhead up there um a new mountain bike skills park um, again, about 30 miles of new trail in, the, in that neck of the woods. So that's accessed via um, Cal Norte um, place or drive in, in um, just outside of the Farmington city limits. Okay. Uh, so top of foothills, it's signed uh, to that new trailhead. There's parking for 30 vehicles. We paved it last year. Um, a multi, um, multi-leveled uh, skills park from, you know, uh, beginner to, to expert a very small like tot lot we call it for for young kids on nice you know push bikes um blm has plans to install a picnic and barbecue area up there um be some restroom facilities ultimately um so really a, a you know a gem something we haven't had here in town that i i think um you know it's it's, it's a pleasant spot you have beautiful views of the La uh you know can't beat it right very very good and then the uh the boat launch uh, project that should get started here soon yeah so we're waiting on a grant agreement from uh it's the office of natural resource trustees which we're managing that gold king mine settlement but we did receive notice of the the award which we'd requested one hundred sixty thousand dollars um once we have that grant in place uh projects fully designed and permitted through the army corps of engineers uh will be prepared to to put that project up for bid um and I think, um, you know, ideally that project would be constructed during low water, you know, either late this summer or, or next fall. Okay, very good. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, coming in with an update on all of your areas of work with uh, with Salmon County. I always appreciate it very much. Thanks so much. You bet. Thank you, yep. Scott. Thank you. Good thank to you. see you all. Thank you for coming in. My guest this morning from San Juan County here on KSJE. KSJE is supported by the Durango Bluegrass Meltdown, April 17th, 18th, and 19th in Durango, Colorado. The Meltdown features walkable indoor venues with Bruce Molsky and Tony Trishka, Special Consensus, Unspoken Tradition in A.J. Lee, and Blue Summit. There'll be an old-time barn dance, band contest, workshops, jamming, and bluegrass in downtown bars. Find out more at DurangoMeltdown.com. KSJE and San Juan College present the Student Success Coaching Tip of the Week. Week 13, Review and Reorganize. Whether you're using a notebook, a laptop, or a good old-fashioned flashcard, reviewing each line of your notes helps ensure that you hit all the right information you reviewed in class and might even remind you of a few things you would have missed otherwise. It's good to review notes shortly after class and then again a few days later. This allows you to take a break between edits and come back to the information with a fresh perspective. The Student Success Coaching Tip of the Week, presented by KSJE and the Student Achievement Center at San Juan College.